displacement of people since World War II. One in four people out of their homes in Syria. Millions here in Iraq. Behind me, the Iraqi capital of ISIS, Mosul, the biblical city of Nineveh. Minutes from the nearest ISIS village here in the extreme north, miles from Syria and Turkey. How does a Christian respond to the worst atrocity since Hitler? Between the civil war in Syria and the advance of ISIS in the Middle East, 14 million people have been forced to flee their homes, more than half of them children. Iraqi and Syrian refugees are in desperate need. Many are living in refugee camps in northern Iraq, while others are risking death and homelessness as they attempt to reach Europe and even North America. We are uh, standing at Mar Hormiz, which is St. Hormiz. It's an ancient monastery in the Nineveh government. We are overlooking the Nineveh Plains. If you look out over our shoulder here, those are the ancient Nineveh Plains. Mosul is just off in the distance. And Mosul uh, is, can be translated Nineveh. That's right. Ancient Nineveh, as we know it from uh, our holy book, the Bible, is modern day Mosul. Uh, ISIS is only 15 kilometers away from where we are here, and uh, we uh, as an organization, Samaritan's Purse, are here to respond to the needs, the crisis that's happened since ISIS came uh, and disrupted life here for so many Iraqis. Uh, there's now been over 3 million Iraqis displaced. Uh, in the recent uh, time with ISIS in the fight. And so Samaritan's Purse has come in um, bringing relief, uh, water, food. We've set up tents for shelter for these families that have been displaced. And so uh, everything that we do as an organization is Samaritan's Purse is geared towards sharing Christ, sharing the love of Jesus Christ. We believe that this is the hope of the world. And so whether we're drilling a well for a community or playing with children and putting in a playground for them or partnering with the local church here on the ground, we're all doing that in the effort of, of bringing honor and glory to Jesus Christ. <laughs> Look at all that ISIS has done uh, to Christians, to many of your own churches, uh, but especially to the Yazidis, to the young women uh, that they've taken, to the young women that are still being held. Uh, what is a Christian to do? How are we to think? Actually, the, all the world, they, they thought that ISIS took from us everything, but actually we took from them everything. Uh, explain that. They took our houses, but we are one home. Mm. We are one land. We are one place. Mm -hmm. They took from us all churches, but we are now one church. They, they, are, they are covering, you know, them, their faces, actually. Mm -hmm. But we are with, you know, with, uh, we can showing our faces. We don't have anything to feel guilty about it or to be hidden. Mm -hmm. But they can, those people, they can't come to the light. Mm. But we are the light. You are the light. We have the light. We have the light. We do. So those people, they can't live in, in, in light. They will live in dark. So they took from us everything. But actually, no one can touch our joy. No one can touch our faith. Because we are not belong to land. We are belong to Jesus. Jesus is our land. Not the land of Nineveh. Where we have Jesus, that's mean we have the promised land. Without Jesus doesn't matter which place we are living. Jesus is protecting his church in Iraq and the Middle East, and he's also growing it. Many are coming to know him. Before Shirzad Suleiman came to know Jesus, he called himself a bad guy. He was in the Iraqi army. After Saddam Hussein fell, he became a civil engineer for a cell phone company. 
One day, while working on a phone tower, he was kidnapped by Islamic terrorists who wanted ransom money for his life. He kidnapped me. Uh, he put me in the back of the car. And, and this is a group of guys that did this to you? Yes, and is, but he's talking about Muslim name. Because when he took me to uh, the place, he kidnapped me there. I forget the name of the exactly the place, but the original place is Samara. And uh, he catch me there. He put me four days every two hours. He said, Allahu Akbar is like name of God. He patched me by uh, AK. And I don't know if the camera, he he's can taking, zoom in. He's taking his AK-47 and he's beating you with beating that. Beating me, yeah. And I don't know if the camera, he can make zoom. He broke in my noise. He broke in my knee. And for uh, six months, I stay in hospital just for my kidney. Uh, really, he gave me a hard time. But the amazing thing happened with me. He changed me from bad guys to good guys. When he punched me by AK, I don't know what's happened with me. I'm sleeping or not, I don't know. Like somebody, he came in, he speak Arabic with me. Okay, we're talking about a dream now. Yes, I, I'm not exactly dream, because I hear the people when he talking, and I hear him when he talk to me. I see him, but the people, he not see him. Like, he speak Arabic with me, he said, I'm Isa. Like in English, I'm Jesus. Go so, it, so uh, Sherrod, this is either an appearance from Jesus or a dream. You're not sure which. Yes. But what I, did what did sure. what did Jesus tell you? He he speak Arabic with me. He said, "Ana Isa, I am Jesus. Go to home." I told him, "Are you serious? You see these people? He kidnapped me, and I see him, and I see him. He sit in the middle of him." He told me, go to home. Mm -hmm. And I open my eyes, I see the bad guys. And this, this group of Islam, uh, he fight each other. And one of them, he used the AK, he shoot his friend. And I just, I open the door, I go to the highway, I take taxi and I come back. But it's not finished, the story is not finished So, so, so you, you, through this, miraculous because it is miraculous mm -hmm. way you were able to just flee leave walk away yeah. take a taxi home yeah. yeah and he's not finished here when i coming to home after three days because the company i called the company hey i release it now he said who release you i told him jesus and everybody he laughed <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you now. Well, I ho I believe it. Yeah. <laughs> I hope he did. Yeah. And the problem is not here. Like after three days, I go to home. My wife, she opened the door for me. She said, hey, what happened with you? I told him, group of Islam, he uh, kidnapped me. She said, I see Jesus in my dream. He told me, I save your husband. He's in save. He coming soon to home. So this is a, 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 a double event here. Jesus is speaking to you. Jesus is speaking to your wife. You've been kidnapped by yes. terrorists, yes. And, and, and the Lord leads you safely back home. Yes, and now I'm not afraid from anything because Jesus, he saved me one time. He's going to save me second time. And anyone who not believe Jesus, please, if he see me now of, or he look to me, uh, sorry, maybe my English is not good, but please, please send my message to everybody. Jesus, he is here. He will save our life. And thanks for anyone. He, he, he listened to me and believe Jesus. He is, he is like our food. He is our blood. He is everything in my life now. As a part in one body, and the head of the body, uh, Jesus Christ. Yes. I want from you uh, to pray for us and to all people that are listening to this and watching this program, yes. to pray to our people here and to help our people and to save our people. I'm not here for begging for help because this is our duty to help each other. Yes. We are here, the Christian here actually, they saw the devil, the face of devil. 
And we know who is the devil here in this modern life. We know that very well. And many people, they are afraid to say that. Me, I don't care because I belong to Jesus, not anyone. What? Well, actually, we are suffering from Muslim. And we did our part to them for many, many years, you know. But in any case, if someone wants to reject or refuse the grace to us, we are still continue. We are still by the grace of Lord. We can, we are still forgive and we can grow up and still taking care about the community. That's mean the next community, the next generation, our kids. And this is important. It may seem like ISIS is winning. It may seem like Islam is winning. But if all of the Christians leave, then there's nothing left here for those that remain. And so we have to remain faithful to the calling God's placed on our life. Samaritan's Purse stands ready to go into the worst places and bring the good news of Jesus Christ. And it's a privilege. Uh, we have fallen in love in the five years that we've been here in Iraq. We've fallen in love with Iraqis. They are an amazing people and they're children of God. He loves them and he wants every one of them to call him Lord and Savior. And so that's the mission of our organization. Start with a cup of water, a loaf of bread. Christians share the love of Christ in tangible ways, praying for the displaced, the children taken from parents, the parents uprooted from their towns and, and villages, Christians, Yazidis, other minorities. Would you join me in being the hands and feet of Jesus? Would you, together with me, look to the cross and share the cross of Christ with others.